Tesla says that it's the best. And a lot of people say that there's competition coming, but I don't believe it. If you got a problem, debate me. Say something in the comment section. But we're going to go through this video and we're going to see Elon breaks it silent on Tesla's shocking new direction. Let's get it. Sixty round all about electric vehicles because we've had some reports. Some are due to report. Tesla's always in the news. They are. Tesla's got to convince the market that they're more than a car company. They're a technology company. And to do that, they're going to have to come up with some pretty striking news on October 10th when they bring Do you guys actually believe that Tesla is an AI company or a service-based company or a product-based company? It's only going to be manufacturing cars for all of its life, or we're not quite sure what direction it's going to go? Let us know in the comment section, but let's see what they're saying in this video. Bring out the next version of full self-driving. I think they can do it. We'll see. The big challenge there is Waymo already has regulatory approvals in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Phoenix. They already have full self-driving cars on the road. The regulators have approved. Tesla's got to get over that hurdle. We'll see. What they might do is announce they have. Now, hold on. Waymo and other companies already have approval. And I said this many times, guys. It's not if one company wins, it's over for everybody else. No, I mean, it's still market competition, right? We have Uber and Lyft. We don't just have Uber only. Lyft has been able to do extremely well for itself, especially since it's been able to learn from the downfalls of Uber first in the gate, right? You have first movers advantage, but you can also have some downturns or some issues. And so because of that turbulence and those issues, another company right behind you can learn. MySpace is no longer the number one social networking platform. It was first in the gate, but Facebook's came and cleaned its clock later. And then Instagram later on, and then of course, Facebook bought them. But then at the end of the day, the same can happen. So as much as we might see a Waymo or anything else, that doesn't mean that Tesla is going to lose. I mean, they're the most versatile and flexible company in the entire marketplace. So even if they see another company go in a different direction and actually have utilized different types of equipment to figure out the FSD problem, then they can quickly pivot into that direction and actually start building systems and processes to handle that. I mean, they're the best to do it, but let's continue anyway. They have regulatory approval in China and they're starting there, the world's largest auto market. That might be a bump for the stock, but they've got to produce and uh, I've got my fingers crossed. We'll see. As Tesla continues to excel with ground. Yeah, we'll just go to China. You guys are acting like China's not the number one market in the world for automobiles. Like America, you guys are not number one. Breaking technologies and soaring stock prices, its competitors Rivian and Lucid are navigating through rough waters. In this episode, will unravel the challenges these companies face, the strategies they're employing to survive, and how Tesla remains a pivotal force in the ever-evolving EV landscape. We'll provide an in-depth analysis of Rivian's struggles with profitability despite their ambitious models and Lucid's drastic scale back on production forecasts. Additionally, we'll explore how Tesla's advancements in autonomy and their exploration into humanoid robots could further their lead in the industry. So buckle up as we dissect these developments and consider what they mean for the future of electric vehicles. So that's a lot, so buckle up, all right? about the dynamics of this high stakes industry, there's something in this episode for you. Make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you never miss out on our comprehensive updates and announcements. And much love to Tesla Shock News and Fair Use, and you guys are gonna be in tune for a lot of information. Showing everyone how it's done. Now on the flip side, we've got Lucid Motors. They're bleeding money, almost a billion dollars every three months. That's a whole lot of cash going down the drain. Over and guys, not only just Lucid, but also regular, automotive companies are losing money it's not like you know it's just nvidia or excuse me it's not like it's neo and these new companies that do ev that's only losing money you remember you bailed out a couple of companies auto manufacturers before in around 2008 if you don't remember then i don't know what to tell you willing to keep the lights on over there moving on to rivian things aren't looking too bright either they're pretty much hanging by a thread relying on volkswagen to bail them out with a cool billion despite the tough times rivian still got a fighting chance to stick around They've got some big names backing them up, but let's be real. It's kind of like being the little brother, always asking for allowance. Volkswagen just joined the club of Rivian backers, but that doesn't put Rivian in a strong spot. It's like they're not holding the reins anymore, which means they might have to make some tough compromises. With a cash position that's not looking too hot, plus having to face a Titan like Tesla, phew, that's a steep hill to climb. They're under a lot of pressure to perform, but only time will tell how this underdog story turns out. Rivian and Lucid are deep in the trenches dealing with significant challenges, which starkly contrasts with Tesla's current stronghold in the EV market. Let's break down the issues they're facing and see how Tesla might benefit from these developments. So let's see the issues that these other companies are facing. A lot of people often say, bro, Tesla has been losing their profit margins. And yes, that is true. But net net, we still had a large margin in comparison to the rest of the companies, not only just EVs, but even ICE vehicles. So old, outdated, gas guzzling type of cars. But net net, 
we were beating them. So our margins are still good, even if our margins decrease. That only makes the competition a little bit more tougher for the competitors, not so much for Tesla. Lucid Motors, despite substantial backing from Saudi investors, is in a tight spot. They're hemorrhaging about $2.5 billion annually, and with a production output of only 2,400 cars in the second quarter, the math just doesn't add up for profitability. To turn things around, Lucid needs to massively accelerate their production rates. But scaling up isn't a switch you can flip overnight. It takes time, resources, and stable operational processes, which they are clearly struggling with. Additionally, Lucid's credibility took a serious hit when they had to drastically reduce their forecast for vehicle deliveries. Originally setting a lofty goal of 90,000 vehicles by 2024, they've now reeled that back to just 9,000. This so Now, is Elon the only one who says crazy things and doesn't deliver? Yes, Elon, he's always, he's a liar. This is what some people say. If you're not one of those, then let it roll off. But net, net, a lot of people do say that. 90,000 to 9,000. Hmm. But no one is getting mad. I'm not getting mad at really young. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's easier to project and it's harder to deliver. There's a lot of moving pieces just in the projections, let alone when you actually utilize a plan and try to make it happen. There's a lot of unknown factors. And so it's harder. I get it. I'm not tripping. I'm hoping the best for them. And I'm wishing the best for them. I don't want other companies to fail just because I want Tesla to win. But at the end of the day, we have to show that, there's are, that there are other companies that do have these projections. And then the delivery is not according to the projections. Elon Musk is not the only one, guys. This severe adjustment raises red flags about their capacity to meet targets and could shake investor confidence further casting doubts on their stability and long-term viability. Switching gears to Rivian, they're grappling with their own set of challenges, mainly revolving around high production costs. Each Rivian vehicle costs significantly more to produce than planned, putting a strain on their financials. However, there's a silver lining with the recent approval of a multi-billion dollar deal with Volkswagen, which could inject some much needed capital and expertise into their operations. This deal might just be what Rivian needs to optimize their production process and reduce costs. Now, looking at how Tesla benefits from all this turmoil, Tesla has already scaled production efficiently and continues to innovate in both product development and cost management. So see, product development and cost management, and we're actually utilizing this very well. But Tesla had its own time period, right? We weren't profitable for some time, too. We had a lot of struggles. Elon often talks about production hell. So we've been through the same thing. We just actually have passed that time. Doesn't mean that it will never come back and it can't come back. Of course it can. In business, that happens. But we have a hell of a team a hell of a system and hopefully even if situations come back like that with macroeconomics we can still battle and fight our way through it remember the actual auto industry is cyclical so it changes due to seasons but even during that seasonality since our margins are very good and our cost saving strategies are very effective we're able to weather the storm even with high interest rates and other things like suppliers from overseas being an issue we've been able to come up with solutions not only that the vertical integration also helps in add value and allow us to be more flexible given macroeconomic conditions. So this is a very resilient company that's able to move and groove regardless of the conditions of the market. With Rivian and Lucid struggling, Tesla faces less immediate competitive pressure, allowing them to further entrench their market leadership. Potential and existing customers might view Tesla as a more reliable choice compared to companies like Lucid, who are slashing production forecasts, or Rivian, who are battling cost issues. Tesla's established reputation for meeting production goals and delivering high quality vehicles consistently could attract investors and customers who are losing faith in the newer entrants. This and so this is just a myth and a false notion or idea out there in the marketplace that always says, well, Elon says this and he doesn't deliver, especially when they're talking about FSD. But it also stretches out to everything else he does because he makes a lot of projections. But other companies, if you look, <laughs> if you want to pay attention, also have the same issues, especially with the new technology like EVs or just batteries in itself and FSD. Things that other people are doing, like ICE vehicles, I mean, they've been around for eons and they're still failing and have little to no margins and still are not even breaking even. Come on now. This could also lead to better terms with suppliers and more favorable market conditions as Tesla could capitalize on the missteps of others to negotiate better deals or attract talent from these companies. Rivian's journey in the electric vehicle market is proving to be a steep climb, especially when standing in the shadow of Tesla, a veteran in the space. Tesla, after more than a decade of refinement and growth, has set a high benchmark in the industry. Rivian, still in the earlier stages, has a long road ahead to match the scale of Tesla's operations. 
Achieving this scale isn't just about pumping out more vehicles. It's about doing so efficiently and cost effectively, which are hurdles Rivian is currently struggling to overcome. Moreover, it's just not about producing vehicles. It's about producing them to be more effective and efficient. That is important. Just like it's important for me to scale properties, but if I scale more units and I purchase more real estate, I have to find more effective and efficient strategies on managing it. It's not about creating creation of wealth only. It's about wealth management also afterwards. And these two things are two different skills. And so even if a company is successful in generating the wealth or generating the revenue, they have to be good afterwards to manage said revenue and then have effective and efficient strategies to reduce costs and expenses and et cetera to increase their margins. Over with Tesla not resting on its laurels and pushing forward with new manufacturing technologies, Rivian has to not only catch up, but also innovate alongside a giant that continues to move the goalposts. Now, And that's another thing. You just don't sit there complacent on your past laurels and just copy and paste like the iPhone 88. Right? <laughs> We're constantly looking for true innovation and not innovation in a sense where we just change the camera or what is it called? The plug in source, whatever the heck Apple should be changing every two seconds as if they're making groundbreaking type of changes. Now, that's cool. That's fine. And that's dandy. But it allows us to continuously innovate and push the competition. And I think these things are not taken into consideration when we're having a conversation about the innovation of Tesla. And if you hate Tesla, I can understand because the hatred is just so high. You can't even see with your eyes. <laughs> the hatred is so high. You want to defy all statistics. Right. So I get it to complain, blame and shame. But that's not a part of our game. We just look for the main focus on the stats, the information and the track history. And Tesla, Elon and all of its staff members have been performing. What are you going to do? Listen to the data, the information, or the hating. The choice is yours. Thanks for watching the this video. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys can receive the next videos on the next one. But everyone loves to hate Tesla. And this is why the competition is not coming nowhere near close. And they have a major issue. But hopefully, just out of the good spirit of me and capitalism, I hope that they succeed. But only if they're effective and efficient. That's the way forward. And just like the ICE vehicles, I wish them good and I wish them the best. I don't want them to, you know, fade away just because of, you know, albino snow monkeys and saving the planet. But if they're no longer effective and efficient and people don't want to purchase them, then so be it. And the old folks, you guys, I got to wait for you guys to move on and can't even drive a car. And we get the younger generation who love EVs and electric vehicles and more things that have better technology. Shout out to China, such a large market, and we will focus on China also. See you guys on the next one. Everyone hates Tesla. I don't know why, because the future is a